All of the food we eat and much of the clothing we wear comes from plants and animals that are raised on farms. Farms are different in type, in size, and even in name. Welcome to Barn Talk. What happens at the barn stays in the barn, but not today. We're going to let it all out for you guys. It's going to be a guest episode today, but before we get into it, you guys know the drill. Pay the fee. If you get any value from the show, we made you laugh, you related to us on something, share it out with your friends, family, coworkers, employees, whoever. The more that you guys share the show, the better it grows, the better content we can make, the more con- the more content we can make. So we appreciate every single one of you guys that do pay the fee. Also, feel free to leave a review on Spotify or Apple. We're up to 1.6 five-star reviews on Spotify, and we're up to over 600 on Apple. So thank you to all that have been leaving a review. Uh, you can submit your questions for our Barn Talk Q&A episodes at barntalkshow at gmail.com. That's where your questions will get answered. Um, so thank you all for the support. We're almost up to 125,000 subscribers on YouTube. And I know our last episode, we were at like 110, almost to 110. It's amazing. It's crazy. It's growing like a growing like a weed, and we're almost to 200,000 on TikTok. If you're not following us there, you could... Look at the clips on TikTok as well. So thank you, guys. We really appreciate it a lot. We're like the water hemp of podcast, just growing like wildfire. Growing like wildfire. Actually, that's Which, not a good analogy. I don't know. Yeah, everybody hates. Everybody I haven't. Hates. I haven't seen much hemp around here. <laughs> Our guest today, uh, if you if you if you're on the road in Iowa, Illinois, Missouri, you've probably seen one of his trucks. If you have cattle, you've probably seen some of his at a sale barn. He's a driver and one of the few people. That can make dad look shy. Uh, that is no kidding. When he gets going, I'll be lucky if I get a word in edgewise. He's coming all the way from just up the road. He's a fellow neighbor of ours. Jared Holmes, welcome to Barn Talk. Thank you. Thanks for coming on. I know it was a far, far drive. It was from- a long drive. <laughs> if I could get a gas voucher or something, I'd appreciate it. We do. Uh, <laughs> well, I don't know if we have gas vouchers, but we'll stamp your parking ticket. There you, you go. You can get free parking. Yeah. That'll work. Yeah. So uh, why don't you just tell people kind of what you're most known for, you know? Uh, how'd you kind of get your trucking business started? Oh, I don't know how that happened, to be honest. I mean, <laughs> start back in the beginning, I guess I was kind of one of those kids that, uh, kind of little professional on the ornery side in high school and kind of was getting to the end of that senior year. And I only showed up when I felt like it kind of thing. I mean, we were pumping hog shit and man, you're 17 years old running a, I think they're 84 twenties back in the day. Yep. eating donuts and skittles as much pop as you could drink and calling one of the older guys to buy you a pack of cigarettes that was living the dream yep we ain't, going to, we ain't going to school yep we're doing this i mean we were making a thousand bucks a week like <laughs> yeah nah. i don't have time yeah no i don't i don't i don't wanna so yep. anyways it kind of got to that marchish april time frame my senior year and kind of got pulled into the office and they were like, you're not going to graduate. I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> well, that's kind of a problem, I guess you'd say. And Ed Punt was a principal at the time. He was an old school guy from Williamsburg, and he was just a badass. Like, you didn't mess with Ed. And he said, the only way I'm going to let you graduate is if you join the military. I'm like, I ain't doing that. No way. So anyway, they had a recruiter come in there to talk to me, and I was kind of blowing him off and – so I'll make you a deal. What's the class you hate the worst? I said, well, that's pretty easy. Second period English. He said, I'll make you a deal. I'll get you out of that class if you give me 15 minutes of your time. I said, make it all week and you got a deal. <laughs> so he pulls me in the guidance room there and starts showing me all these uh, videos of these guys ramping dirt bikes off the back of Chinook helicopters. And I'm like, damn. I could get behind that. Hey, I could do that. That'll be good. So I ended up going that route, and I have yet to ramp a dirt bike off the back of a Chinook. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't, it, it wasn't, you never quite made it to that. To, not, not quite. Yeah. And I was there for four years, and I never saw anybody else do it either. So I kind of, yep. a little angry about that. Went from there and uh, did the military thing and, and came home, and I, my family trucked like i knew what i was gonna do i remember when i was a kid back in the day sitting at pizza hut on the main drag and watching those walker trucks blow by all yep. lit up 
Yep. yep. That's what we're doing. We didn't have no money or nothing. And uh, kind of went to bank after bank after bank begging for a loan and got turned down about 17 times. And on the 18th time, I found a, I found a sucker. You found an impressionable <laughs> we, banker. We found one. <laughs> so what was so, your first truck? Uh, 2005 Kenworth yep. uh, W900, and that's yep. uh, what we run today. Yeah. Just kind of the... Everybody's got Peterbilt's. Yep. And these trucks that we run, you can stand up in the bunk and put your pants on without bending over. So that's, that's a plus always in your a plus. line of business. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, started from there. Um, had one, went to two, went to three, and kind of started understanding the way it worked. At one or two, you're replaceable. You're replaceable right now. Yep. We were pulling for a carrier that had a guy – out of Northwest Iowa, he ran 30 rigs. So for the smaller guys, it was yes, sir, no, sir, how high, sir, what yeah. time, sir. Yep. On that old boy come rolling in there, I'll never forget it. It was a Monday, and I was in there just turning in paperwork or something, and he come in there and said, rates are going up 25% on Monday and walked out like a boss, and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> holy shit. Yes. That's how you do that. Okay, cool. It's just a different tone when you're running a balance between scale and volume. And these companies now, they want to take 100 loads and be like, these are yours, these are yours, these yep. are yours. Yep. Handle it. Don't call. If you got problems, call, but don't have any problems. Yeah. Fair enough. And that's how it's changed over the last 12 years or so. And we never wanted to get as big as what we were, but there's different skills and efficiencies when you're running mass volume to be efficient yeah um so it kind of went from there and yeah how many trucks you run today uh <laughs> i should say very if you've got day. if you've got enough people to put in them so i'm gonna say it like this we have about 16 loyal dudes yep. that are riding for the brand yep. <laughs> and then you always got that bottom end that's yep. in and out like one of them circular mall doors yep so, for us, it's not how many, it's how many we can run good, how many we can run efficient. So, yeah. How you know, many you can count on. Right. Yeah. Right. So, for us, it's taking care of the people that take care of us, the guys that are loyal and the guys that, you know, are, are there and passionate and do a good job and aren't there yeah. for the paycheck, we'll swing the bat as hard as we need to for them. The other guys that are kind of just show up, maybe. Yeah. See ya. Yeah. Whatever. So, I mean, as we went, and you kind of have to have that volume, but now that we got, you know, we started out, we were in so much debt, it'd make your head spin. But now that we kind of got that under control, I mean, hell, I'll be honest with you, we got seven trucks sitting right now, and I don't give one shit. Yeah. If the best guy comes along, perfect. If not, piss yeah. on it. So, that's kind of how we run. It's like, yeah, I don't care. If you're coming here to do a good job, let's go. Yep. And we kind of scout them out. Like, we we don't very rarely advertise because you get all the shit bags in, but... We're, we keep our eye kind of not like a recruiting thing, but yeah. like, hey, this guy's a baller. Get yeah. over here. <laughs> yeah. If you, if, if there's somebody out there that you know that they're in to be in, yeah. you'll make a place for them. Exactly. But oh, yeah. You're not making a place for somebody that's. No, no. We, you know, and at that time when you're in all that debt and stuff, it's like you have to go. But when we did that, I mean, we got in so much trouble with insurance and the DOT and all that shit. We were just putting an ass in the seat to try to get the load covered and kind of learn that lesson the hard way. Wrecks, rollovers, pissed off farmers, shit like yeah. that. It was like, nah, dude, we're, we're done yeah. with this. Get out of here. Yeah. So that's so kind of the focus. What year did you start the trucking business? Uh, it would have been 11, 2011. So almost you've been in business for over a decade. Yeah. Now. yeah, kind of went fast, awesome. I guess. You're yeah. a veteran. Yeah. yeah. Considered a vet like now. <laughs> Something like that. And it's predominantly hogs you're hauling, right? For the most part. Yeah. yeah. We'll haul cattle here and there, but, I mean, we're in a breadbasket of hog world. Why yep. fight it? Yeah. Uh, yep. A lot of them guys are coast to coast and hauling whatever they can haul, but we can get in enough trouble around here. Yeah. We, we don't need to go chasing it. Yeah, so. Absolutely. Is retaining is retaining drivers now harder than what it was, or is the hardest part ret retaining them, or just sorting out 
finding guys that you can count on? Um, it's a leadership thing. Retainment comes back on leadership. Um, sorting through the good ones. I mean, hell, we had one in there. He lasted a week, and he come in there and talked the talk, man. He could walk on water. Yep. Shit. My ass. Yep. He turned in his notice and couldn't even finish that. And the gal that runs my trucks, she's a, she's a blessing. She told me about it, and I just text her back, peace out, Girl Scout. <laughs> Fuck out of here. <laughs> That's just the way that it yep. is. I mean, so it, retention is leadership. Leadership is you cannot make anybody on your team do anything you will not do yourself. Yep. That's that is cut and dry of it. So then when you take 20 different personalities and throw them on a team and that's the way we're different. Truck drivers think they're individuals. Bullshit. Yeah. At this operation, we're a team. So when you take that many different personalities and put them into one basket, them boys better drive and they better get along. And the top yep. end of my guys, they're like rabid bloodhounds, man. If they sniff out a, a weakling, you're, they'll run you out for me. So nice. that, but you'll get a guy in there that maybe is the best truck driver in the planet, but he's got a bad attitude. And that's a rotten apple in the basket. You can't have that. The yep. reason that the water's so clean at my pool is we skim that shit all the time. Yep. Get out of here. <laughs> we ain't having it. We we're gonna Well, go that's through. good because I, people say that if you build a good enough culture, your your guys will weed that out for you. So mm -hmm. you don't even have to do it anymore, which is awesome. Yep. Sounds like you got that figured out. When this podcast is done and we edit it, we are just gonna take every good analogy. He's got one line oh, he's got I, more one liners than you I got. I told you. Nice. So the intro of this was I said there are not very many people that make me look shy. But I said, this guy, I probably won't even get a word in edgewise when we get going. <laughs> yeah, he's got more one-liners than you, right. which is crazy. <laughs> there, we, we, the, through the military and truck driver culture, like it, it's the one-lining masters. Oh, you yeah. can't help but just get your pad and paper out once in a while and be like, hey, dude, I'm, I need to remember that. I'm stealing that one. That's yeah. gold right there. <laughs> so what brand did you did you go in the guard or did you go no, in the army? No, we went we went all in, baby. We weren't gonna do it half ass. <laughs> I'll never forget sitting in the boy and they're like, What do you wanna do? I don't know. What's what's cool? Oh man, Cav Scout. That that's cool. Fuck, sign me up. You wanna be airborne? What the fuck's that? You jump out of airplanes. Why not? Piss on it. Let's go. Whatever. Yeah, sounds good. And that was one of them things like, you know, you could talk about it easy once you get there. Yeah, it's different. Oh, shit. Maybe I spoke a little soon. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but it was, uh, that's the way it was. I mean, I was always that way. All in, whether that was partying, whether it didn't matter. Like everything we yep. were doing is all in. Yep. And that's just kind of how I live my life. We're not going to, we're not going to do it half ass. We're going all the way. So and do you got to fall down? <laughs> okay. Let's do it again. I've been broke. I've been from nothing. I don't give a shit. I'll go back. I was probably more happier back then in them days yep. when I didn't have nothing to worry about. Yep. I understand. But, uh, yeah, so it was active duty. Uh, yeah, I went to basic training and all that shit in Fort Knox, Kentucky, and that was kind of uh, – I went in there, I would say probably not arrogant, but fearless, like, this is going to be stupid. And kind of get off that tour bus there, and the big boys are yelling. And it was like, oh, shit. I'll never forget, it was 4th of July in 2007. And we were there, and I said to myself, there's an easy way to do this or a hard way. I think I'm just going to take the easy way and shut up and start pushing. Yep. <laughs> yep. But, uh, yeah, I did that and uh, got done with all my training at Fort Benning, Georgia at Airborne School and did the plane jumping deal and – Get How? out of there and tell us that uh, they said we were going to 25th Infantry Division. I'm like, that's in Hawaii. Hell yeah. And they're like, no, 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 no. The other one. Shit. Fort Richardson, Alaska. Fuck, it's cold up there. Oh, no <laughs> shit. So I go up to Alaska for three years and four years, three years. And uh, we got deployed out of there twice. And then we did all our training in Alaska. And kind of after my third deployment, second deployment, I came home. I was going to go to college. Tried wow. the college thing for about a solid two weeks. So I'm practically a doctor. Absolutely, 100%. <laughs> but I was 22, 23 at the time, and I went to a junior college, Blackhawk, and I was going to judge livestock and do all that stuff. Challenge was 
those kids were like 18. We had just the maturity yep. gap there, you know. Will you buy us beer? Like, nah, fuck this. I can't. I, I, I'm out. Of I got to get out of I'm here. I'm out of here. Yeah. So I uh, went out of here and worked for a couple uh, local farmers and took care of pigs. Yep. Doing that kind of stuff and just begged to get in a truck. Like, yeah. it's time to go. I yep. wanted a truck. So once I finally got my trucks going, yeah, we just didn't look back. What was the biggest struggle of starting the business? Like, if you could think back, like the hardest thing or like a story or a moment that you were like, holy shit, I don't know if we're going to get through it or if we're going to grow this thing. Or There's a lot of those, I'm sure, after a decade. But Yeah, quite a few. Uh, I think you run into a lot of challenges and a lot of hardships, but it's how you how you meet those. So I wasn't very smart. But I was very, very good at asking questions and finding people that have done it and just picking their brain apart. And Greg Reagan told me when I first started, never say no to a load. Just never say no for at least the first year. And that's what I did. And then I learned from things like that, that guy out west walking in that office, like, okay, volume is control and that kind of stuff. So... The debt was probably a problem. Getting the money was was a problem, and then you got to lay out all that. You know, it's it's a lot of capital, mm-hmm. especially if you don't have any money. Right. Yep. You know, put fuel in the tanks and this and that. I'd say it was easy when it was just me, and uh, then you start bringing on team members. And we the biggest challenge we had. I can't remember what year it was. It was probably thirteen, fourteen. I had probably two or three employees at the time running. And it was a different level of responsibility. When you're a responsible, and I kind of have, I wouldn't say a mouth, but it, I'm not scared. I'll call a spade a spade. And I've learned these lessons the hard way. When you go square up to a corporate company, they're like, bye. Yeah. Well, when you have two or three guys rolling, I'll never forget, we kind of had a, a hardship with a company, and they pretty much were like, you're done. Like, oh, shit. And what they were doing was bullshit in the first place, but they didn't like to be told that from a truck driver. So, uh, anyway, it was so bad, I had to go haul flats for Billy Bones Huber. Holy cow. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So, I had guys on my payroll that I found loads for them, but me personally, I was out working for Bones. So, that was the hard, one of the challenges, like, wait a minute, I'm supposed to be the boss. But it's one of them things, that's where the military comes in. You have to do what you have to do, no matter what. Never take no for an answer. How many, however many walls are in front of you, figure it out. Yep. Crying about it is not going to do a single bit of good. <laughs> yep. So, you know, don't talk about it, be about it. That's kind of how we did. And then as we started to scale, it got easier. Yep. But then we figured like, hey, if we get the best guys that we can, that ship will float itself. If we communicate the goals, communicate the mission to the good people, then it will sustain itself. And that's kind of where we're at. We still run into challenges here and there, but um, the people is what does it. Yep. Do you still truck yourself t- yep. today? Not yep. as much as I used to. Yeah. Uh, I will still get in and go, and I, I, I like to be in there out there with those guys. The morale's better. Uh, when they see the yeah. captain out there rowing, it's, that's, it, everything clicks better. Uh, as my kids started to get older, I was gone. So I got four little girls and, uh, another one of those things of talking to people, Larry Davis, legend in the business, he talking to those guys was like, Hey, love what you're doing. Do not forget that that time's not coming back with your kids. So I kind of took that in and I was gone a lot when the girls were babies and then they started getting older and getting involved and, we're pretty big into showing cattle together. So I kind of let the ship float itself. And then I started my cattle entity yep. because it allowed me to still be a dad. And my wife, bless her heart, she was taking care of them while I was gone because yep. it was a didn't say no thing. Customer service, and that's frustrating about trucking. You know, it could be blizzards or hurricanes in the Carolinas and South Farms blown down and we drop what we're doing to go bail their ass out. And the next day, not just completely forget about it. So we're back here hustling, thinking that we're buying loyalty. Yep. <laughs> no, no way. Yep. So that's what's really helped us retain guys too, is like they know that I'm not kissing nobody's ass. It's we will do the very best job for you, but it's not in terms of inspection of favors. It is I'm here to do you a damn good job. Yep. 
but that's the way it's going to be. I want you to succeed. I got to succeed, but we're not going to extort our people to get you what looks good on your computer. Yep. And that's a big challenge too with hogs right now is everybody's looking at the computer. That's not a common sense thing. Nope. People like you guys and us that are on the ground, we're taking commands. You're telling me an intern that's got three years of college under his belt and charged me? Okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. Makes it hard. It, yeah, it does. It does. And the worst, the worst part, um, and I think this is everywhere, is that we are in an industry. Well, you're really in two industries because the tracking world's kind of the same way. Because you were a generation... You grew up around it. You knew what it was about. We built an entire industry on farm kids. And it used to be that when you were raising livestock and you went to hire somebody, you knew if you hired a farm kid, that kid probably knew X, Y, and Z. And that kid probably knew how to work hard, probably knew how to back up a trailer, probably knew how to you know run something with a clutch. Yeah. And these guys, these companies today, we've run through all of that. So now we get these interns out of college has never seen a live animal. And we get them into positions where they're making decisions, like you just talked about, and they have no frame of reference what it's like to be on that end of it. And it it's a struggle. It is a struggle. And I don't feel like it's going to get any better because even within these, even within these livestock companies, we have people that are generation removed from actually doing the work of raising those animals and, or hauling those animals or whatever. And gosh, dang, it's tough sometimes, but like I said, I don't think it's going to get any better. So sounds like our government sometimes too. <laughs> kind of relate that bit. to the government. Yes. A little bit. That's right. Common sense. Common sense is in short supply. One hundred. Com common sense is on a new phone. Who dis program? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Well, you talked a little bit about your daughters and showing some cattle. So we we kind of led this with if anybody driving around the Midwest has probably seen one of your trucks, or if you've been to a cattle auction or a, or a cattle show you might have seen because you're getting you got enough you have enough on the home team showing cattle that you're getting around a lot so how did the how did the cattle thing start yeah we do get around um the cattle thing started just as a kid just always been around it uh, mom and dad had cattle grandpa had cattle cattle is the passion of mine it's the joy of mine it's it was if I could raise cattle full time before I trucked, that's what we would have done. Cattle don't make money. Yep. They don't care what anybody says. Like around here, it's very hard. Yep. This is hog world. Um, so we showed nothing good. We were terrible, uh, kind of for the experience, but the passion was still there. So as my situation or mine and my wife's situation evolved, we knew that's what we wanted our kids to be in. So sports is great. Uh, band's great. Uh, all that stuff's great. We want to use the show animals as a bus to deliver our kids to where we want them as adults. And there's so many things that go into that. The critics will tell you, oh, my gosh, it's so expensive, blah, blah, blah. But what they don't see is – my 11 and 12 year old daughter this summer worked harder than most full time men. They take care of their stuff. Yep. Now, I'll go buy them what they need. Um, we do spend good money on those things. But at the same point, it's not about the money for us. It's I want you to find me an 11 and 12 year old girl. And even my eight year old and my three year old go do that stuff. They do it every day. Yep. So the goal is, is to when my daughters go to college and they go to their job interview the hope is that not through just through their success but through the surrounding your kids with like-minded kids as, as i think was what the goal is but like i said getting them to college to where i don't care who it's for oh i hope they stay in the ag uh but I, elanco whatever oh we know who you are yeah yeah this interview is over with, but we'll just sit here and talk because we know who you are. So that's kind of the, the route that we've chosen. And 
uh like it's, it's kind of like a sports thing i mean the challenge is you go to ratio especially with not in a sexist way but females you're probably not going to go uh being from small town i would be a professional right. athlete so we're kind of using this and the biggest part about it is when that's not winning or losing it's surrounding our kids with people they want them surrounded by you know if you hang out with crackheads you're crackhead you want to go hang out you want to be a millionaire go hang out with millionaires that's yep. the same point uh with the kings we're with just kings. using the show cattle as a bus and it's something that we can all enjoy like i'm not going to sit here and lie to you and tell you that i thoroughly enjoy going to, to a softball game every night of the week <laughs> like it's, it's not yep. my thing yep. uh i'll do it because i'm a supportive parent but at the same point like i got shit to do yep so with showing cattle like it's something that we can all yep. go do together a um, kid today with a that with a work ethic is a rarity very i mean that is a powerful that's and, that, and can talk to people oh i i say this all the time when i today whatever environment I'm in, if I run into a teenager working somewhere or just in passing that will look up at you and talk to you and look you in the eye, I'm impressed yes. because there aren't many of them. Do teenagers get jobs anymore? Like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't see I haven't many. seen it. Yeah. But with the way the economy is, yeah. you telling me that these parents are legit, like, oh, buy you a car, like... I don't know. I right. think it's because the minimum wage has gone up, and if you're going to hire somebody, would you rather hire a high school kid or would you rather hire somebody that has some experience in whatever you're hiring them for? I don't know. I mean, I don't know. As in, like, you know, you'd rather hire the adult that's I'd rather had some... hire the retired guy because I, yeah. 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 I know what not, I'm getting. Yeah. 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 I know what I'm getting. Not break any land speed records, but yeah. <laughs> get tore up. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah. Exactly right. We see that in this young generation, whether it's it's everybody wants to be an operator and everybody wants to get the Snapchat and be cool. Yep. Dude, I'll see you Snapchat and scooping out a green bin there. Buddy. Yeah. Yep. That's right. So it's just different. Yeah, hundred percent. Everybody, like everybody wants the thinks shit. that they're working, but they got to have it on social media. Like, dude, knock that shit off. No one gives a damn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so when you were in high school, there, what are your friends? And he's going to remain nameless, but one of your friends got a job working for a big ag company around here, and he was crop scouting. And I think he slept in the truck more. Like he loved that job because every day he'd go crop scouting. He'd just go park somewhere in a field and take about a two hour nap from lunch to two. And then and he's like Then he'd start up again. Then he'd start up again. And I remember, you know, him being at our house bragging about what a good job it was. And I thought Oh Don't hate the player, hate the game. <laughs> and that's exactly right, because I'm like so, what are you learning and what who is letting you do this yeah but i it's not i'd like to say that that was a unique case but i bet it's not so no i don't think so how'd you meet your wife uh was on a deployment oh, i came back i don't remember i came back and i <laughs> funny thing is is she grew up literally a quarter of a mile from where I grew up, but we were on the line. I was Washington County. She was Mid Prairie. Kind of never really knew her, knew of her. And then we were at a party one night and I saw her and I'm like, who the fuck is that? <laughs> and sure as shit, it was her. I'm like, wow. That's Gosh, amazing. I wish I would have walked down the road a little yeah, bit. Yeah, good I was for younger. you. That is bicycle distance, and I don't even <laughs> like to bicycle. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we uh, met at a party and kind of went from there. And uh, I was, was on the last leg of my last deployment, and she started like kind of mess. I'm like, lady, you, you you back off, you stop that. I'm busy, right? But it just kind of went from there, and I was getting out, and we got serious, and I came home, and to be honest, I, uh, I, I, when I came, I was damn sure getting out of the military, but I was doing some things there that, that was pretty high speed. I mean, we were getting ready to start, uh, you know, Q course at SF uh, right there, and we, that's kind of a route that I thought I was going to go, but the last deployment really ruined it for me. It turned really dumb. It turned into hearts and minds over there. Small things. We couldn't wear dark eye or dark sunglasses because it offended the people and we couldn't wear gloves and like, no. Nah. Then it started getting to the point where 
if we were getting shot at, we had to ask to Whether shoot back. And I'm like, we gone. So anyways, got out and was back home for about a month, I suppose, at college. Hated that. Kind of didn't, it didn't, wasn't what I thought. So when the whole time I was gone, I thought I was just missing out. You know, it's like all your friends are partying and shit. Well, now looking back on it, I was just on a rocket ship. Yeah. Compared to those guys. Um, but so I was home for a month or month and a half, I suppose. And our unit was getting ready to deploy again. And I just decided I wasn't happy at home. Like, you know what? I, I couldn't wait for to get out. Yep. So I was, I was going to go back. Uh, so once you get out, you kind of have a grace period to where you don't have to start over. Yeah. Kind of like they know they can pull you in. And I was yeah. good at it. I was very good at, at the military thing. Uh, it came easy to me. It wasn't hard. And it's a damn good life for a single guy. Yeah. But I just wasn't happy here. It wasn't going the way I thought. And um, I was going to go back. And then, uh, you know, just a, a personal thing. Uh, she got pregnant. I was literally the same day I was going to talk to her about, hey, I'm going back. She told awesome. me that she was pregnant. I'm like, it was funny. What What did you want to talk to? Nothing, I guess. Uh, shit. I, I got to get a get, truck. <laughs> I better get a job and get one fast. And yeah. when, you know, I worked for Brenneman's taking care of pigs, and I hauled yeah. feed, and I pumped shit, and it was just 20 hours a day nonstop, and it just wasn't. It was fine. We were getting by, but not like just, just getting it. It was work, it. not fulfilling work. Yeah. Like you didn't feel like you were – heading towards a goal well i mean we were working and i enjoyed the work and i've always enjoyed like everybody kind of like oh that's impossible that bullshit watch uh but it was just like damn dude we're going as hard as we can go and we're still struggling to pay the lp bill like yeah now nah, there's a better way we're gonna figure this out that's when we started kind of hounding the bank yep and then it went from there so uh yeah met her kind of in the late term of my military deal and that's hard, man. You try to have a relationship freaking 2,000 miles away. That's a that's a tough, tough deal. Yeah. So she damn sure was with me from the very beginning. And she worked, her and I work very, very well together because I'm extreme, right? And she's very kind of... Reels she, you in. Yeah. You damn sure have to have that balance because if I didn't, dude, I'd be like a freaking free-range nuclear weapon and just be <laughs> blowed up somewhere like in 18th mode of bankruptcy and hills bank would probably have to pour more concrete for all my shit you know so she's damn sure been the one that's there and kind of kept me in line and and done that thing so thank the good lord for women that are able to look at a man and say there's no better phrase i think than a woman that looks at a man and goes you know he's kind of a piece of shit but i think i can fix him because yeah. <laughs> that has saved high mean, <laughs> that's i think that still happens oh no it i does. think it just happened the other day really <laughs> you know? i've i've given i mean i've given this advice a thousand times i will have been married 30 years this fall and i tell people trisha stays because every once in a while i give her a glimmer of hope that she's of hope that she's making <laughs> progress but I said the one thing it is a it, that it, that's a razor that's a razor's edge because if you ever get them you can push them a long ways but if you ever push them the point that they look at you and they say you know I think he's a lost cause you are fucked yeah. you have got to perform well enough that they always look like well we're making progress and if you can do that they'll 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 ride it out with you so i think that's right I, i've i've gotten that advice <laughs> i've heard it a hundred times so i'm i just got to get a little bit of hope every yeah. every every year just a little bit just make a little pretty good. good i'm just, just make about, sure you bump the line every once in a while you do have check. to do that you don't want to get bored nope it's a it's a battle it's a battle of wills there's no doubt about it you don't want to just throw in the towel but at the same time you know you got to you got and let's face it we're most men are pretty flawed individuals if we're brutally honest with ourselves and we could probably stand a little bit of fixing and hell at this stage at 30 years i i should be just about perfect but i'm not and i i guess i'm a little bit a little bit down on that but well I think, if you were too perfect her job would be done well i think by 40 i will be 40 years <laughs> i will be perfect 
That's why I tell then, her. Ten more years, just hang it up. Ten, just hang out ten more years. You'll get me. We'll be good. Yes. Okay. So, so we talked about the show cattle, talked about the trucking, but you got this cattle herd that you're you're going in on now. So, well, this is what started this whole yeah, deal because yeah. I guess how this happened was you called me one day because you were because you were mowing some hay, you were mowing some waterways, a neighbor of mine, and you asked me whether or not you could mow mine. Uh, it's dry here in Iowa, so all these buffer strips, the government and their infinite uh, goodwill decided to let everybody mow them and bale them. But you, there's a reason why you were doing that. So you had what happened that put you on this on this path that you had to find some hay this summer. Oh, uh, we had our 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 hay shed burnt down, and then we learned the difference between content insurance and commodity insurance. So we took about we bailed first and second cutting for a, a resume builder for yep. practice. Yep. And uh, that's how many how bales you lose? Four seventy two. Holy <laughs> mother Mary. <laughs> Pure alfalfa, the cheap, you know, the cheapest yeah. stuff you can get. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. So anyway, uh, we're we're talking we're talking about this, and I had no idea. I mean, I knew you had cattle, but I don't know anything about it. And my idea of guys that have cattle is somebody that's got some cows. You breed these cows, and you calve them in the spring, and then you some guys sell them, some guys keep and feed them out. And I'm like, okay, great. Well, then, just real quick, like, you kind of told me what you were doing, and I was like, I stewed on that, like, all weekend, and I was like, I have not heard of anybody that is doing this, and to me, because I'm a hog guy, and we've been doing this for ever, I was like, damn, that is a good idea. So, let's let's go back a little bit. You, obviously, you had cows, and you kind of did it the way everybody else did it. Yep. So... Talk about your operation and and talk about kind of where you were and what got you to thinking, all right, there's a better way of doing this. Started out as a hobby like everybody else. Um, kind of just the thing about farmers is we don't change very easily, right? It's I do this because my dad did it. My grandpa did it. And then you kind of start noticing just, just small things like, okay, why am I the youngest cat in this sale barn by a long shot? <laughs> and you just kind of get ideas, right? And I wasn't happy with the way it was going. I'm still passionate about it, but there's a better way. I know there's a better way. And I'm not a hog master, but my success comes from the hog industry and learning and seeing how they're doing things. So it started to get me intrigued like, hey, this, there is a better way. So I started dabbling with it in cattle. Uh, three years ago, I had this idea. I wanted to run my cows like a sow farm. I wanted to have, instead of one check every whenever, fall, like right now, most of the guys are selling their feeder calves, uh, I wanted to have two checks or three big checks, and then it kind of kept going from there. So we would start – it goes back to show cattle – we would start buying these high dollar show calves. And then it was like, wait a minute, let's buy embryos and make our own. And then it was like, wait a minute, let's buy the factory and make our own. So it kind of went from there. So a hobby turned into like, we're looking around and now all of a sudden we got 400 cows. Like, oh shit. It came into like, this isn't a hobby anymore. We need to figure this out. And then as we started getting more equipment and started building buildings, started buying tractors, it was like, okay, we got to figure this out. No more fucking around. We got we to gotta figure this out. So what we do is the, the vision and what we've been doing is we have 50 head of cows every 21 days. And we, we roll them. So it kind of was like that just kind of here and there the cat and then last year we did like six groups of them and it worked like way good just from a, like we we used to run them all together just mass chaos so then when we started setting those cows up sinking them like they do with the sows it was more manageable when we do 50 head every 21 days i throw those 50 cows and everybody's sorted to when they're going to calve throw those 50 cows up close and we only wash those 50 cows so from an um, employee or help standpoint team member standpoint 
we're only watching these and we are going to have five days of hell instead of six months of hell watching these things. So it's yeah. a straight management standpoint. Now, when you look at it, we can create whatever we want to create. So a lot of those guys, they using different cows, different bulls, whatever the case may be for me, we're just taking it and using the best of the best. I can create whatever I want to create through embryo technology and things of that nature. So whether I want to create show cattle, show steers, show heifers, we'll go through, sex the matings, and put exactly in those recipient cows what we want. And then it kind of came to fruition where we were running big groups of calves for the sale barn, commercially bred old school, and I was getting pissed. The, the steers were $300 more than the heifers. Like, this is bullshit. No way. So I'm sitting there one day pissed, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to create only males, only males. Yep. And I'm going to take a uniform set of cattle. And in the sale barn way, you know, if a guy brings 20 head in there and they're sold in like six different sorts, usually not very good. But if you take 50 head of like kind weight type cattle and they open the doors of that thing, and they just keep them running, dude, them old boys will get excited and yeah. just start waving like a parade. So that kind of came into it. It was like, okay, I'm going to create exactly what I want to create when I want to create it. And then the other portion of it is everybody calves in March. So the market is flooded in the fall. Yep. So I'm going to create calves when there's not much availability, and it started clicking. It started working. So that's what we do now. We run 400 cows, and they're set up. We'll start calving November 18th this year and run groups every 21 days throughout that. And uh, that's kind of how we're doing it. So you have um, – did you build a – did you build – to? do you calve outside or do you have a building where you calve them basically Used inside? To. This is the kind of – this is the – this – this coming calving period is when we went all in yeah so we dabbled in it and dinked with it and tweaked with it for three years and and right now they're gonna have my facility done yeah so it's it's uh takes the elements out of it um it it uh we bring the cows that are ready to go and the, basically our farm is a big circle the closer those cows get to calve and they come to the new facility they calve and then they go right back out and work their way around in a big circle so um that's how that is yeah that's slick um well from a help standpoint it's got to be that's got to be way better because you really can have people whoever's good at dealing with calving you've got pretty steady work for them. So 21 days, how long How long is your calving cycle? You said you start, when did you say you start? November 18th. And then how long will that run till? We'll roll them till March. Yeah, slick. The, the health is the challenge, right? So that anytime you do anything against the grain, everybody's going to beat you up, right? So I went on a tour in Nebraska, and they take these uh tour buses out in Nebraska and you can go look at everybody's places and just looking at it health is always a concern and I agree with that like cattle are not designed to be inside and ours are not inside they're inside when they're close to Kiev and they Kiev and then right back out they go so our barn is a hybrid barn so all these Kievs airflow is huge just like in hogs biosecurity in my situation is huge and just so we're clear my situation of what I'm doing is only kind of based around here. You look at it, we're, we're what, $16,000 dirt. Running cattle in Washington County on any type of volume basis is absolutely not even remotely in the ballpark of, of efficiency. Yeah. So the idea came from, look at my grandpa. He raised three daughters on 40 head of cows and provided for their family with 40 head of cows and grandma was a teacher you ain't doing that right in cattle in 2023 in washington county right you can do it out in the sand hills the dakotas or whatever but in washington county it doesn't work so if i wanted to be in the cattle industry you have to have volume and you have to figure out how to do it yep. so for us that was the way to do it and the disadvantage is the capital i mean you got them buildings ain't cheap no 
So then you throw the technology into it and, and flushing these cows, but the dairy guys do it all the time. Mm-hmm. So we're just trying to do it and make a beef model and don't be, we're not trying to line breed cattle um, because that's the heritage. That's a cattleman's heritage. But right. the problem is cattlemen are like, I'm going to create whatever I want to create. That doesn't work anymore. I listened to a podcast and it was like the CEO of Walmart on there. He's like, no guys, you need to create what the old lady at the grocery store wants. Once. And it really, really, really resonated with me. Like, holy shit, that guy's so right. I'm out here to create what I want to create, but no, 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 no. Yeah. That's not going to work. I need to be focused on creating what the people want. Yep. Yep. So in my scheme, I can create whatever I need to create. Uh, I can make bucking bulls out of there I want in an efficient manner. And then I can turn around and make beef that goes straight to Walmart for their manner. So we don't have very many bulls, like, at all. Like, we could get by with zero bulls on my farm. Yeah. Everything is through artificial insemination or embryo transfer. So your calves, are you finishing any of them out, or are you selling no. them as feeders? I learned that lesson the hard way. <laughs> my first, like, two years, I took them to fats, and I mean took it right, right in the rear. Like, okay. We're going to let the professionals do this. Yeah. I'll create it. And that's where my passion and joy comes from. I yeah. create it. That's what I love. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a huge on. That just adds more to it. Well, that's the thing. It's capital intensive just by itself. And you throw that in on top of it. And that's an unbelievable amount of capital tied up. So how many people are doing this? Not very many. Yeah. Because I'd never heard of it. I hadn't either. I didn't, Uh, um, I mean, around here especially, but. Okay, so let me say, let me ask you this. This is a better question. So this idea that you had, you know, you were calving like everybody else, and you started searching because you're like, there's got to be a better way. How did you, how did you build your conviction of enough to bite the bullet and say, okay, that we're going to do this or was it a gradual did you piece it it really can't piece it though when you make that decision you kind of got to be all right all right hell or high water we're gonna we're gonna do this yeah you're in or you're out um that's probably one of my weak points i've always been i I would say probably fearless and maybe not think about the the bad things i get it in my mind so my grandpa told us one thing when we were little boys he said if you get an idea in your head and it still is in good standing after three days, you drop the hammer and go at it. If it's kind of the second day getting wishy-washy, throw it in the trash can. This deal for me has been like six months. I've been working on it for three years, but up until we were building, like I couldn't get out of my head. That's what I was going to do. I thought it was brilliant. I thought, I'm like, we're doing it. Yeah. Piss on it. And I think a lot of it comes from is my knowledge Again, not the smartest guy in the hogs, but understanding, like, wait a minute. Just okay, that, that works for them. Look at the dairy people. And then seeing around here, everybody's just stuck in that March cabin way. Piss on that. We're going to figure this out. Um, so it's been a – it's the, it, the the journey's been the the fun part and the naysayers, and that'll never work. And matter of fact, a couple of weeks ago, I mean, this building's already going up, so the money's already gone. Yeah. But just for good time, I called – and that's the thing about me. I'm not afraid to ask a question. I like don't care. I'll call a stranger and be like, "Hey, what do you think?" Anyways, month ago, and it was too late. You weren't changing my mind, but we started building this facility. I mean, yeah. we got a shitload of money going this thing. And I called just the guys that I knew would just call me a dumbass. Like there ain't no way. And I just I started the conversation like, "Hey, why will this not work?" And it was just kind of like. Uh, 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 uh. and i took some notes off of it that i already knew were going to be the challenges because it's not going to be perfect but biosecurity is going to be a problem we already have plays and stop for that but they don't understand there's no pasture in washington county there's under a thousand acres of pasture in washington county i guarantee it and if there is one we just bought one it was it was stupid like it was insane right up there off 92 yep that ain't gonna work I mean, you're going to run 40 cows in there. Yeah. So the trick of it is, and the answer's come as it is, is, I mean, we're surrounded by corn. Mm-hmm. 
and the government place for cover crops. That is a shitload of feed source that you could feed a mass amount of cows with. Yeah. And in, in in a very, very cost efficient way. Right. So it's just the it's the struggle. And then it's almost like the ride because I can't just call somebody that has doing it, been doing it for years and be like, Hey, how'd you get this to go? Yeah. There is a there is a, a damn good couple, Chad and Amy Wilkerson, out in uh, western Iowa, Linden. And kind of went out to their place four or five years ago, and it was just starstruck, like, wow. And Chad, is he was way up with Smithfield and kind of designed their sow units and stuff, and that's where he was at with it. So yep. they're putting in embryo calves for other folks, and that was really, like, I always wanted to do it, but going out there was like, okay, that it can be done. So for us, the difference is, is we're creating the calf. They're all my cows. They're all my donor cows. They are all like each group's going to go for a mission. Yeah. And it didn't go well. Like the, it just didn't. And now it's like, all right, we're going to do this thing. I just sold calves a couple weeks ago. Had them all in Missouri for the summer. We had that barn fire. The farm was a freaking clusterfuck. Yep. So I took them straight out of Missouri, rent ground down there, and took them straight to sale barn. It didn't go well. Yep. And I was pissed. And I'm like, now you, you fuckers, you watch this. Cause I'm coming. Yeah. I'm going to create 150 calves out of the same sire and the same dam. And I mean, you ain't sorting nothing. I'm going to, you just leave them doors open and let those little bastards fucking roll in there. <laughs> I want them old boys falling off the bleachers and like we're calling the ambulance or break a hip. Yeah. All black, beautiful, like just line bread, ready to rock. Just, I feel like I got beat. We're, yep. we're going to fix that. Yep. So, at the end of the day, the vision is to create a premium for the product, right? You aren't starting a farm from scratch and raising cattle and making it work. You have to have a premium. Yep. You have to you have to figure out a niche. Yeah. And then for some reason, God uh, blessed me with a cattle passion for yep. some for some reason. But we're gonna own it and go with it. But I don't think anybody's gonna uh, stop in and want to buy the genetics that we got out here. Do you see our Do you see our pet named Chuck? We got we got one calf out here that's yeah. just it's the, the cats, it's cats the horse's dad. friend. Yeah, it's the horse's friend. It's it's her, and uh, they brought this Sawyer's girlfriend's dad <sighs> brought this calf over, and I was like, and he's like, you guys feed it, and then we'll we'll, we'll share it. we'll share half the beef. And I was yeah. like, oh, that's good. Yeah. Until I realized that that calf is a is a January calf. The problem is, it looks like it was born in March. I'm like. Well, that's why he brought it over here. He yeah, wasn't going to bring anything yeah, else he over. He didn't bring anything good. So I, <laughs> I asked Cat every day. I'm like, is that is is that thing going to grow? Or is that is that just going to be, is that the size it's always going to be? Because it doesn't look like it's got much of a, it almost looks like a a miniature. Yep, it it's does. It's a miniature black Angus, I think, is about I what think it is. secretly she hopes that it doesn't grow. I I, I do. <laughs> uh, that's We're going to have to, it's going to have to be a deal where you're going to have to send her away from the day and when she comes home, Chuck's gonna be gone. Where's he at? Yes. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Oh, so like for the biosecurity, that you say that's your one of your biggest things that you're locking in on. Is it kind of the same as like hog barn biosecurity boots? Different boots, coveralls. Do you are you washing? Are you showering in? Shower, like what are the precautions you're probably taking. not to that level yeah. so the biggest thing is kind of the air quality so every barn that we went to like the calves were kind of in the back corner or whatever our barn's designed to have these little doggy doors so the mama cows they are kind of confined they'll be fine these things have doggy doors to where these calves all the baby calves can go out to the back we got little rye two acre runs uh, okay so the little calves can go away and get away from mama and get out of the out of the shit and whatever so the thing that's nice about our setup is we calve all them cows out in a timely manner as soon as all them girls are calved out they all leave we have an opportunity to clean the barn mm. throw the lime down oh, in the sure. barn rebed the barn start over from scratch so we did and and i don't know if we're gonna need to flush the barn out but we did install big old fire tanks and or, uh, tanks and fire hoses to flush it out if we need to but cleanliness and air quality is okay. probably the main thing. Nice. And then the other portion of the biosecurity is you see a lot of guys going by and five cows from a sale barn here, five there. Ours are going to be, or the new ones will be single sourced. 
Yeah. We're going out west, and them girls are never seen a sail barn. Not, not that that's a bad thing, but when we're bringing in that kind of volume, we need to make sure, similar to what guys are doing yep. with hogs, yep. they're all single source, ready to go, no chances of yeah of so red stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The biggest goal, I mean, long. I mean, you have to have short term goals, medium term, long term. We want to create the cow that we want. I mean in my mind sure and not just one of them 300 of them that are all exactly the same same sire same dam from a predictability standpoint and then we're gonna throw our embryos our high dollar embryos in those cows to give them the best shot to raise the best calves in the world yeah so that's kind of it takes a long time i mean it's gonna take three years to create a cow uh, but that's and a lot of capital, a lot of time. Yeah. It's a lot of feed. Plus, if you're keeping those calves, if you're creating that cow, yeah. that's a calf you can't sell. Yep. If you're exactly. gonna keep her. So that's just that much more money you're getting tied up. So these cattle guys they want consistency, right? Yep. So if they want consistency, I'm not gonna fight the grain. All right, let's go. I'm gonna yep. figure it out. But I think that'd be crazy to have three hundred or four hundred or thousand of cows. And you got to be careful with the line bread portion of it mm -hmm. because I damn sure in the first one, I don't want the cattle to end up like the hogs and the chickens and the turkeys, right? Yep. So I got to be very, very careful with that because I don't want Walmart calling me and mm -hmm. saying, hey, make yep. me 3,000 of the same cows and then start putting all these guys out of business. Yep. That's not the intention. Yep. The intention is to create opportunity in a new way per region right so you might have some guys out of dakotas listening to this and being like what a dumbass just shut up <laughs> it's not that this is a washington right. county sixteen thousand dollar an acre ground way to, to raise cattle yep and who knows maybe we create opportunity for a guy that's trying to get started and we can we can create a, a custom type deal for somebody yeah there's a lot of kids passionate about the cattle that dude i'm very blessed because i got i got a side hustle right yeah mm -hmm. a, a decent one so but there are guys that just don't maybe have that but but just absolutely eat breathe and sleep cattle mm -hmm. maybe we can figure this out maybe we can help them yeah so do you ever you know you made the comment about uh fattening them out and that wasn't that wasn't your cup of tea but if you get to the point that you cr you could possibly create your own market for these cattle to where somebody speaks up and says, hey, I'll finish them I'll out. Buy, well, I want every one of them. Yes. And if you do that, you may get to a point exactly what you're talking about where you may have somebody willing to build a, a facility to finish them yes. where you, you create these cattle, you retain the ownership, but have somebody feed them out, and then you're delivering them consistently to the same market to the same guy. Yeah, I mean that. I think that's, that's where it goes. I don't. I don't want it to get there. So I'm a firm believer in you do what you're good at. Yeah, and, and it's hard because I've always been like that. Well, here I am trying to wear two hats and run trucks, and then try to start this cattle connoisseuring thing that's never been <laughs> done before. It's just. Yep. fucked up but i'm a firm believer like in the fat cattle line there are guys that are absolute masters at feeding fat mm -hmm. cattle and they're passionate about it i'm not one of them yep. uh, my job's over with now like i want to create it oh yeah that's a that's a good little bitch right there all right i'm done with you let's make the next one yep um and that's that's just me yeah well that's not saying that i can't hook up with somebody that and make a team with somebody but for yeah. us it's i don't like to lose you know i don't like to get embarrassed and and I whatever I do, I want to kill it. I want to I want to be the best at it. So you know that that's kind of where that lies. Well, I think you're thinking spot on. I was impressed because that just that really stuck with me. I was like, damn, that is that is smart. So. It is cool. It's 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 new. It's exciting because it's you know this county. It's like you said, it's known for hogs, and it's hard to make it in, in cattle business around here. So I think you're on to something. I definitely think you're on to something with that. So it's cool. It's really cool. How do you balance your time with all that shit going on? I don't. I don't know. Delegate. You sleep? Do you Try ever to sleep? Get to delegate. I sleep a lot more than I used to. Ah, uh, delegate people. You got to have people. It's just like Donald Trump. What he's a master at? Put the right people in the right place. Yep. That's how we do it, really. And if you're not doing your job, no hard feelings. See ya. Fuck out of here. Um, 
I've been bad about my time because I'm passionate about the cattle. So naturally, most of my time wants to go towards the cows. So I once I get this going, I need to get back to the, the meat and potatoes. Yeah. But my guys, they're so good. Like, they don't need babysat. They know the deal. Yep. They, 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 they know they can call me if they need to. But yep. they also know that I got a lot of shit going on. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah. And a lot of it's self-reflection. The biggest thing that I have is like, okay, you know, this last summer, I look back, I'm like, hey, I'm being a shitty dad. Like, I've, I've not neglected my kids, but I need to do better. I need to be a better husband. I need to maybe not be so selfish and go take a family trip and just have a good attitude about it. Self-reflection, I think, no matter what you're doing and being honest with yourself, right? If you lie to yourself, forget yep. about it. You have to, to have an honest conversation and you need to have a network of people. Dude, I, my circle is tight. I mean tight. You need to have a network of people that you can have honest conversations with and just, hey, dude, Hey, I'm going through this. What do you think? And don't get all butthurt if they tell you what you don't want to hear. Yep. Work on it. So that's what I really try to do. Uh, but there again, no one like, honestly, you can tell yourself what you suck at and work on it. You don't have yep. to master it, but yep. dude, be better. Make an effort to be better. Yep. That's kind of kind of what I have to do because my mind goes like 10 million miles a minute. And I'll come home and I mean, just be so excited about, babe, I got the next best thing. And she will, eyes will just roll in the back of her head. And I'm like, just, just hear me out. <laughs> just, just stop. Just stop for one minute. Just stop. Eat supper. <laughs> be quiet. Let's talk about school. I don't want to talk about school. I'll yeah. talk about my cool shit that I got going on. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So that's, that's that. I guess. Do you, what's like, what's your long term? Do you just love the game of, building shit and doing that kind of shit running running your businesses or or do you have something that you know you're really striving for whether it be your kids whether it be legacy whether it be whatever like what's the thing that gets you that you really like that's what i want not legacy i like doing i love when people say you can't do that i'm gonna do it twice watch so i'm kind of in a personal deal right now with the trucks like I love the trucks and I love everybody on my team, but it's to the point where it's almost large enough. Like, what am I doing? I have four daughters nine times out of 10. They're probably not going to take it over. Like what, what am I doing? And I'll be damned if I'm giving it to a future son-in-law someday. You (laughs) you want it. You can, you go get in a truck and you build it. Yeah. So that's kind of where I'm at with that. And then you kind of, it's like a long-term progression. Like, okay. I did that. I did that. Now what am I going to do with it? So I think maintaining it to the highest of levels and then watch as everything changes. But we're in a time right now, the hog industry is in not the best shape. It's a very, very big concern. And it's like with what these trucks cost, what trailers cost, what labor costs, it's like, man, everybody, it's not so much about the quality anymore. It's about what's your cost. Yep. So with you know looking big picture from our customer base and trying to drive home to our, dude you got to get them hogs if it don't walk it don't ride we have to get every one of these things to the rail and sometimes that's not even enough yeah so when you look at the pool of good guys to pick from it's just a challenge and then to get them to buy in to hey if our customers are not successful you're fucked you don't have a job and about six months ago, oh, that's fine. I'll go drive a dozer for 40 bucks an hour. Yep. Well, that's fine. But guess what? That's starting to come back to reality. Yep. So the trucking portion of it, I'm still like, that's what made us. So it's like, if I didn't have my loyal core group of guys, I'd be like, fuck this, sell it. I'm done. Yeah. But I got those guys and I'll ride or die for them. But yeah. The cattle is where my heart is, where my joy is, where my passion is. It's not about the money with the cattle. If I died in a pasture checking my cows of a heart attack, no problem. <laughs> you know, that's that's what I truly love to do. So it's not the money thing from there right now. It's sitting as got a lot of people watching and just waiting for that bitch to not work. 
like, yeah. you like the chip. You want yeah, to have a chip so on kinda, that shoulder. I'm hoping it, yeah. in, my, me, in five years I can just stand there and they'll be driving by me and mugging me and I'll just, <laughs> you know. So that's it. But I think right now my focus is enjoying my kids while they're young. And then providing them an opportunity, right? Like when they get out, like that's kind of the next level. You know, my wife and I kind of have a dream to have a farm for each one of our kids. We didn't, we didn't, we didn't have farms like at yeah. all when we started. And so now it's like we're out here just busting our ass to get them paid for. So when we both are gone, I want a farm for each one of my children. They still, they still have to work and they get a job. Right. But like me, dead in the ground, like at least there's something. That to help sustain them. They want to send their kids to college, no problem. You know, grandpa helped us out or want to build a nice house, no problem. But kind of like the Yellowstone, you <laughs> selling one inch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. John Dunn Not style. One. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we're just in that. We're enjoying the building phase, but man, it's like on the way over here, I was like, man, I don't, I don't know. We just started. It's like, shit, that was 12 years ago. Like, it goes fast. It old. It doesn't go fast. Yeah, we better figure out what we want to do when we grow up. Yeah. So. I think it changes every day, though. You know, one time, one year you'll think, I'm going to do this, and this is what I want it to be, and then the next year it changes. Yeah. Shit happens. It does. I Life changes. The, I think that's the thing that, as long as you're doing what you're passionate about, that's mm -hmm. cool, you know? We talk about this. The greatest part about agriculture or about owning a business, about the grind is you're not you're not capped you're not capped so i i had a conversation with a with a classmate of mine that works for the university and he's the top dog at what he does but he's done the only the only money he gets no matter what he does no matter how much he could do the great, invent the greatest damn thing that they got. He's going to get a cost of living because he's maxed out. He's done, and he's pissed because he he sees the qual the level, the level of people that they got coming in there and the people he has to work with. But he's done. Yep. And I just came home from that and I thought, you know, whether we make a dime or lose a dime, it's on us. And if we do it right, if we do it right, it can be as big as we want it to be, and nobody's capping us. Yes. That's what I love about ag or any business that you build that's your own is it can be what you want it to be. Sometimes it sometimes it's some it's a fucking nightmare, not not the dream. Yeah. But that's on you. And that's you control your own destiny. Yeah. It's the freedom. hundred percent. Right? So it's not about the money. We yep. we love what we do. Yep. That's that's the way it is. That's the freedom part. Yep. Absolutely. You know, and that's what I think is important. Yep. We can do what we want. It's again, it's not the money. It's I'm doing what I want. And that the being tapped part, like when I was in the military, I was this thing I hated. It didn't matter what the hell we did. You're getting paid X. Yeah, I want control of that. And nine times out of ten for me, it was always less than that. But yep. same thing with my guys on my crew. Like, dude. You can go as far as you want. You are not anybody in any one of my businesses. You're not an employee. Right. You are an asset. And you're an asset. There's been a lot of guys work for me that started driving our trucks, you know, came from nothing. Now they own their own rigs. Yep. They pull our trailers. I watch them buy houses. I watch them buy three haul release. I, buy, I watch them buy ground. Yep. That's a fun thing to be yep. a part of. And that's what I really like about it. So I make sure anybody on my team's like, dude, you ain't here punching a clock. We need you. We count on you. And we expect big shit out of you. Yep. If you want to come here and beat around the bush, I ain't having it. Right. And it's not a rude way. It's, dude, get the fuck out. Yep. We don't want that. Yep. So if we have one employee, so be it. If we have 50, great. Surround yourself with winners. And then watch everybody else grow and develop. Yep. And, and provide that freedom. So who, if somebody wants to become a fucking winner and join your your squad, where can they reach out to you at? Megan where can they Live. find you? Megan Live at my office. Megan Live. She's Megan the, Live. She's the she's the master filter. Homes, livestock, and logistics. Yep. Is that on website? Facebook? Facebook. 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 Facebook's gotcha. where they'll find you. Yep. Yep. 
But don't don't apply if you're a pussy. Exactly. You got to come in our, and our our best thing is no baggage, no drama, no bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I will say for anybody out there that does not, you know, doesn't have any exposure to hauling hogs, livestock, whatever, and for us when we would be loading hogs out of site one, which site ones are double site, and it's the worst one to load out of because it's just big site, big site, fucking running pigs. pigs a long way. Yep. And when they would pull six loads out, and we would get the schedule, and it would be, and it will, it would be people that will remain nameless, and we would go, oh fuck, yes, because you knew, you knew that the first two trucks were going to be there, and then well, I shouldn't say that. What really sucked is when you had five loads, you knew what the five were going to be, and then that last truck, you get, we would say to ourselves, well, you know there's no fucking way he's going to be know here. You're <laughs> he ain't going to be here. <laughs> yeah. We, he ain't going to be here. Yeah. But when you looked at the schedule and it was Holmes, we are like, Fuck yeah, fucking man. A, this is going to go smooth. Yeah. The That's- reputation speaks for itself. I mean, and there's, there's a lot of great guys that are yes. – this job, this business – if you're not a great guy, you're not going to be in business very long. Yeah. But amongst that, if you're good, you're good. And home guys good. loading the pigs, they appreciate it. Yeah. Cause like when you're loading pigs, shit happens. Pigs suck. They can be assholes. Yeah, but I mean, there's a lot of challenges that people don't see from our perspective, our end of it. We have a lot of challenges to navigate through. And I mean, I got a blacklist of farmers that are just fucking assholes <laughs> i mean like yes. but there are such like dude it's like this dude is a good shit and we'll even put in our notes on our on our spreadsheet schedule like hey this guy's a freaking dickhead yep watch it or a grass nazi do yep. not drive in his grass that kind of shit yep but, uh, i can that's a little that. shit matters though i mean our main thing when we hire somebody is like and th- th- don't take this in a wrong way but like, i don't give a shit about corporate i don't give a shit about that plant i want to be tight with the guys loading yeah. Because if I need a solid or I need a, fa- and I'm a huge guy, I keep it on our level, right? Like corporate don't need to know what the fuck's going on out here. You and I, we'll hook up and we'll 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 do it. If you're running late, you got something going. On, I got going late. Whatever. Communication's a big thing. Uh, but we tell them guys when it like, hey, when my main goal is when our trucks go rolling into that farm, I want that truck clean and representable, and I want you getting out looking like a professional. Because yep. I want that farmer to be like, oh fuck yeah, and that sets the tone. It does. Because it can be a very emotional task. Oh, you You ain't kidding. It can be. But if we set the tone right, it's better for everybody. Better for the hogs. Better for everybody. The trucker's good. It's pretty fucking smooth. It just, they're the most, they're the most important part of the whole thing when you're loading them. Hey, I, I don't, I'm sure I, you wouldn't, you wouldn't know this, but I will give you my best of all the truckers that we've had that have, either brought us pigs or we've loaded pigs the best trucker story i can tell you is a load of wiener pigs we got out of kansas that showed up and the guy brought the gal he picked up at the truck stop in omaha with him she was wearing (laughs) leopard skin tights and a fur coat a fur waist she was or he was she was she was They're just carpooling, dude. It's being and efficient. and he fine. gave her a pair of booties, and she got in the trailer and helped him unload, unload the, the pigs. pigs. That is service. <laughs> yeah. I shit you I'm not. I'm sure she got five stars. Oh, oh man. man. 100%. 100%. Oh, man. That was a sight that, to see. I mean, hey. that is top. That's, that, that's, that was, that's one of them deals for me. It's kind of like, I see nothing. I hear nothing. <laughs> yeah. I <don't> <laughs> That's dead. I was impressed. I was like, well, you can say what you want, but she's dedicated. Oh, yeah. man. Yeah. I guess. Sure. Well, I, Jared, I think, I don't know. You got anything I else? I think that was my best uh, yeah. bit right yeah, there. Yeah, that was good. That was hell of a good podcast. I hope you guys got some value from it. We appreciate you coming on. If you want to be a winner, Jared Holmes, Holmes Trucking, go on to their Facebook, reach out. But if you're going to be a pussy, don't reach out. But, uh, Jared, thanks for coming on. If you guys got any value from the show, share it out. We'll see you back here next week for another episode.